Hey, welcome to Ones and Zeros. My name's Ben, and today we are taking a look at episode six in our FPGA basic series. In this episode of the series, we're going to focus a little bit on some of the different development boards and some of the things to consider if you're looking at getting into FPGAs and you're not sure kind of what to be looking for when it comes to actually getting a board to start playing with. So I'm just kind of trying to make it a little bit helpful to help you decide sort of some of what the options are that are out there. I'm primarily going to be focusing on the Intel or Altera Cyclone devices that I typically use. Um, although you will find that there's similar sort of devices from other manufacturers and well as well. Um, although I don't typically use them, so I don't know a lot about their particular development environments and all that sort of stuff. So we'll focus on the um, Cyclone stuff from Intel or Altera specifically in this video. So have a few different options which we've got here at the moment. Now, you'll probably, if you've seen other videos in this series so far, you will probably recognize the Teresic D0CV boards that we've got two of here. Um, those guys, I find, are generally my bread and butter when it comes to just messing with different FPGA stuff simply because they have a wide variety of different things connected to the FPGA that I can use for testing and debugging. Still got a good selection of connectivity and stuff like that. So if you're looking for something just to get started and you want to be able to have, you know, push buttons and switches and LEDs and VGA and memory and a bunch of different things like that, they're a really good option. Um, Depending on your budget, they can sometimes be a little bit pricey, but they do come with a variety of, of different I.O. and things, as I mentioned. So you've got um, VGA and PS2, which you can connect up. Um, SD cards, you've got a whole bunch of GPIOs, as we've seen in previous videos. SD RAM, the LEDs and seven segment displays, switches, push buttons, um, so they're quite flexible for allowing you to be able to start to get a feel for how FPGAs work. Now, you don't necessarily have to spend as much money as you would on one of those initially if you just want to get started and you're not sure what you actually want to, like whether you're going to enjoy them or not. Um, there is cheaper options, much like this guy here. So out of this particular collection of boards, this was actually the first one I purchased. Um, I had had prior ones before that, which I ended up getting rid of in order to grab the Teresic ones um, about 12 months ago, I think. This guy was a lot cheaper than the Teresic board. Um, this is just a Chinese kind of knockoff board. Um, still has things like your PS2 and VGA, SD RAM. It does have some push buttons and switches. It is wired in such a way that you can only, like the push buttons and switches are wired to the same pins. So you can't use them both in a particular project. You've kind of got to be a little bit selective. Um, it does have a piezo buzzer as well as RS-232 and still a decent selection of IO. Now the, this guy here is a Cyclone 4 device, whereas the Teresic boys are all Cyclone 5. Um, this one has the least amount of logic elements out of all of them. Um, you may have seen from previous videos when we're looking at the adaptive logic modules, which is something that you find in the Cyclone 5 devices. The Cyclone 4 devices use what are known as logic elements, which are basically cut down versions of what an adaptive logic mod module is. Um, so it still has your combinational logic and registers, but it has less of them per logic element. Um, this one here has still been quite useful though. Um, the first time I developed an actual working CPU in an FPGA, it was actually done with this board. And that was a CPU with a 16-bit data bus and 32-bit address bus using VGA to be able to display text modes on a 
um, VGA screen, as well as giving me UART via RS-232 to connect up to a computer so I could send and receive via serial. Um, had a PS2 keyboard connected up to it, was making use of the SD RAM as well as um, had it hooked up to a microcontroller via SPI. And all of the different components inside the FPGA were all written in Verilog HDL. So they weren't using QSYS or anything like that. They were actually developed from scratch. So something like that may be suitable if you just want to give it a bit of a try. It was a lot cheaper than the D0 boards. Um, bear in mind, the quality is not quite as good. It's still a decent quality PCB. Some of the components and the design of the actual circuitry is not quite as good as the Teresic stuff, especially in terms of things like um, on the Teresic boards, they do actually use some capacitors with the push buttons so that you get a bit of debouncing in the circuitry, whereas you don't get that with this guy. Um, which means that you may need to do a little bit of additional stuff in your Verilog code in order to be able to debounce the switches properly. Um, but as far as making use of it and getting the various pieces of it all up and running, it was still not super difficult. Um, if your budget could manage it and you could afford to step up, I'd probably go with something from a slightly better known manufacturer. Um, one of the reasons for that, not just as far as quality, but in terms of documentation and support and things like that, um, the documentation and examples and support and things that come with the Teresic boards over this one is leaps and bounds different. Um, I did get supplied with schematics and things like that for the cheaper board, um, which was enough to get me started being able to set up the inputs and outputs and all that sort of stuff so that I could get it working. Um, if you're not looking at all the bells and whistles and having all of the additional stuff like push buttons and everything, then there is cheaper options as well like these guys, which um, this board has a Cyclone 4 with 6,000 or so logic elements. Um, these guys don't have all of the push buttons and all that extra stuff. They do have SD RAM and they are still quite flexible boards. These guys are also Cyclone 4, um, but these have about 15,000 logic elements. So you've got over double the amount of logic elements and more RAM blocks, more in this case, they're multiplier blocks rather than the DSP blocks that we get in the Cyclone 5. Um, so you, you're actually getting more chip for your money, um, but you are not getting all of the additional stuff that you would get on a development board like this. Bear in mind, if you go with these sort of options, you're gonna to need to make sure that you get an actual USB blaster for it to be able to do the programming, because unlike the Teresic boards, these guys don't have one built in. Um, there's other things to consider as well. Um, does it have an actual flash chip on board to store the bitstream for the FPGA? If not, then you're gonna to have to look at programming it each time you boot the FPGA or power it up. Um, much like you have to on this board here, whereas these guys have that built in and you can actually program directly to that so that you don't have to hook it up to the computer and program it every time you power the board up. You can go a little bit more crazy and start to get into boards like this one, which is the D1 SOC. Um, definitely more pricey than the D0 boards. This guy is pretty cool though, because it does have some a couple of ARM7 cores on it as well. So you're getting CPUs as well as the FPGA fabric. Um, it does have a bunch more adaptive logic modules and memory and things than the D0 boards, because it's a slightly more advanced um, chip. But this one has the ability to be able to run Linux. Um, so that you can actually have software running in Linux that's interacting with what you're doing in the FPGA and various ways that they can actually communicate, which is really cool. As far as the 
um, ARM 7 and Linux side of things. I think this guy has like four gigabytes of memory, a bunch of USB ports, Ethernet, all sorts of stuff. So you can use those that side of it much as you would with a typical like Raspberry Pi or something like that. But you have all of the FPGA stuff built in as well, which then you can use for your VGA. It's got composite video input, audio input and output, um, PS2, your typical seven segment display, switches, LEDs, push buttons. There's SD RAM for the FPGA, which is separate to the DDR RAM that is used by the ARM7 cores. So a lot more options there, um, a lot more flexibility. But again, you're paying more money for it. Um, so I like having that one because there's some really cool stuff I can do with that that is a little bit more difficult than hooking up, say, the D, one of the D0 boards or something to a microcontroller, which is still fun, it's something I enjoy doing as well. Um, and there is a lot more expensive options. Um, you, you can spend, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on an FPGA board if you really want to. Um, these guys are a little bit more in the ballpark of someone that's, you know, a amateur or professional hobbyist or something like that. So um, that's kind of a bit of what you can sort of expect and some of the reasons why you might look at some boards over the others. There is even cheaper options as well, which are known as um, CPLDs. So whereas the FPGA or field programmable gate array will typically have things like um, your memory blocks and DSP or multiplier blocks, PLLs, things like that, CPLDs tend to be a little bit simpler and are basically just an array of logic blocks. So you still have your combinational logic and your registers, so you can still do a lot of the stuff that we've done over the previous episodes of the FPGA basic series. And an example of those, which we will have some of these coming that will be shown on the channel moving forward is these guys, which is basically a Max 2 CPLD, it's still an Intel or Altera device, um, does come with an onboard crystal and a bunch of I.O. These can be useful for, you know, getting into designing things like GPIO extenders or adding additional peripherals to a microcontroller, things like that. Again, you need a programmer for these guys like the USB blaster. Um, but these ones are actually pretty cheap if you just want some logic and some registers to be able to mess around with. So again, um, there will be some of those coming, which we're going to have a look at on the channel at some point, probably in the next couple of months. So a few different options there, uh, depending on what you want to be looking at getting into. If there's particular things that you want to see in some of the FPGA videos moving forward, definitely feel free to drop us a comment below the video. There is also the subreddit and email if you want to get in contact with us there. Um, there will also be a bunch more FPGA Basics videos moving forward. So keep an eye out for those. Um, should be a couple in the next couple of days, hopefully, depending on how things go. So a huge thank you to all of the people that have been watching and enjoying the FPGA videos, all of the likes and comments and things like that. I'm really grateful for all of that. Big thank you to our Patreons, Craig and Luther. Um, it's awesome that you guys are helping to support the channel so that we can continue to grow it and make some really cool content. Um, hope you found that interesting and useful. Um, again, you don't need to spend a lot. You, If you just want to get your feet wet with FPGAs, feel free just to get you know a cheaper option. If you think it's something that you are really interested in and sort of want to stick with a bit, if your budget allows it, it might be worth spending that little bit more to make sure you've got something that's going to work a bit better with you moving forward and give you a few more options. So um, again, any questions about that, feel free to ask them in the comments below. Hope you're having a wonderful day or night or morning or evening, whatever it is in your part of the world when you're watching this. And thank you for watching.